Good morning. My name is George Athanasakos, and I'm delighted to welcome you at the Ben Graham Sanders Virtual 2022 Value Investing Conference. I would like to thank you all for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the conference. As you may know, I hold the Ben Graham Chair in Value Investing at the Ivy Business School, a chair endowed by Mr. Prem Watsa of Fairfax Financial. My mandate has been to develop an academic program in value investing and spread the word of value investing to academics and the public, because most academics don't know much about value investing, and the public is somewhat confused about what value investing is all about. Over the last 17 years now, I've developed the Ben Graham Center for Value Investing and a rigorous academic program in value investing at Ivy. In addition to offering value investing courses and carrying out research on value investing themes, we're also offering students apprenticeships through our Ivy Value Fund, who invest in student recommendations and managed by uh, recently, recently graduating students, as well as organizing many annual events, such as this conference, a stock pick competition, whose 2022 finalists made a presentation to a panel of distinguished judges yesterday, a seminar uh, that I offer, a five-day seminar that I offer uh, this uh, May to June 3rd in Toronto, live. Uh, and as part of my activities at the Ben Graham Center, I have also recently published my book, Value Investing, From Theory to Practice, which is the first and only academic book in value investing in the market. With this program, we're making history as we're the first university in Canada, we have developed a fully-fledged academic program in value investing, and the second in the world after Columbia, where Ben Graham, the father of value investing, taught. At the same time, we're breaking new academic ground as we've taken a trade subject like value investing and we've elevated it into a rigorous academic program. In other words, we brought value investing and stock picking to academia. And this is big because academics have paid little attention to stock picking over the years, particularly with regards to the view, the value investing view of risk and risk management. And so I would like today to contrast risk and risk management and the modern portfolio theory, what is taught at universities, and value investing, and set the record straight. I cover extensively this in my book. The two key tenets of one portfolio theory are that investors should hold well diversified portfolios, and that in this setting, the only risk that matters is better risk, volatility based risk. According to the theory, markets will reward investors only for better risk. Academics argue that anyone who tries to pick stocks only achieves a high level of diversifiable risk for which they will never be rewarded. And that exposes them to large losses. Value investors reject both tenets of one portfolio theory. They don't believe astute investors must hold well diversified portfolios, and they reject the notion that beta is a measure of risk. So is there a need for a well diversified portfolio? Academics regard diversification as a substitute for due diligence. They believe that stock-by-stock -stock analysis is a wasted effort and that diversification will save us all. Of course, if we cast our minds back to October 08 or March 2020, experience tells us that diversification does not work when we most need it to. Now, even if, even if we accept that diversification reduces risk, its downside is that it also dilutes returns and limits an investment's upside. In fact, economic theory suggests that a perfectly diversified portfolio will learn in the long run the risk-free rate. So why not cut the chase and invest directly in government bonds? Beyond this, though, diversification would work 
if we knew and could measure all possible risks. However, we cannot. There are two kinds of risks. The risk we know we don't know, those measured by the variance of returns, and the risk we don't know, we don't know. Those that are not captured or measured by the variance of returns. Diversification does not protect us against the risk we know, we don't know, we don't know. In a book they wrote in 2006, the late mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot and former Wall Street Journal editor Richard Hudson showed that the daily returns of the Dow Jones Index for the period 1916-2003 did not plot out as a bell curve. The far edges flared too high. These risks are more commonly referred to as fat tails. The first academic to discuss this was John Maynard Keynes. But his view of risk was difficult to quantify. And so his views did not prevail. What prevailed were the view of mathematician Thomas Bayes that risk is like a roulette. In a roulette, we know all the odds, even though we don't know what number will eventually arise, as we know what we don't know. Unfortunately, risk in the markets is not like roulette. In the game of the roulette, the odds are fixed, and what we observe around us does not affect the odds. Our world is more like a game of poker, where whatever we observe around us affects the odds. So it is not possible to develop formula and cross-form solutions. As a result, models are developed based on the bell curve that is, we know, we know what we don't know, will fail. Recently, even super quant academics have come around and admitted the fallacy of developing formulas and depending solely on formulas. Andrew Law and Mark Mueller from MIT recently wrote an article titled Warning, physics envy may be hazardous to your wealth. In which they argue, and I quote, physics envy has created a false sense of mathematical precision. End of quote. So what value investors want? What do they want? Value investors want to reduce risk without limiting the upside. How do they handle the risk? Well, they select securities after in-depth due diligence. They choose to invest in companies whose business they understand with a history of stable cash flows. They never buy on margin and avoid companies that are over-leveraged. They employ position limits. They have checklists of why they want to buy and what they are buying. They adhere to a disciplined process of when to buy and when to sell, and they never short stocks, among other risk mitigating strategies. More importantly, value investors employ the concept of margin of safety. They only buy a stock if its price is well below the intrinsic, the fundamental value. To be clear, though, Value investors don't totally reject diversification. If they did, they would only buy one stock. They tend to hold concentrated portfolios of between 15 to 30 stocks. They believe that some diversification, along with a margin of safety, go a long way in, in dealing with the risks discussed above. In a 2009 article, that Nassim Taleb, the author of Black Swan, co-wrote with uh, Daniel Gostin and Mark Sprinsdangel, and published in the Harvard Business Review. They talk about the six mistakes executives make in risk management. 
two of the problems they identified were studying the past and putting faith in the variance of stock returns. They end the article by stating that risk managers place a greater emphasis on making money than avoiding losses. Avoiding losses is key for value investing. Value investors would rather minimize risk than maximize returns. This is the role that the margin of safety plays. <coughs> now, is better a risk metric, a risk measure? Value investors reject the notion that beta is a measure of risk. Risk for value investors is not volatility. Volatility is good. Risk is the possibility of permanent loss of capital. We have permanent loss of capital, for example, when investing in an over-leveraged company that will go bankrupt in a recession, or when investing on margin and forced to sell, even though this may not be desirable. <coughs> As Howard Marx says, and I quote, we can ride out volatility, we can ride out volatility, but we cannot undo a permanent loss of capital. Will value investors view or risk change the views of risk at universities? Of course not. Academics are too invested in the status quo. You have a few investors, value investors, or even a few aging academics argue against modern portfolio theory. But next time you hear that we must diversify and that beta is a measure of risk, ask yourself, why, why billionaire investors like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Seth Klarman have mocked those concepts and much of what is taught in finance departments at universities around the globe? So here's my advice for professionals, especially those who are starting out. Never start your analysis with spreadsheets and formula. This shows you don't understand what is happening, and you're trying to hide behind the formula. I'm not alone in this. Buffett has also cautioned investors, and I quote, to beware of geeks bearing formulas. Not Greeks, geeks. Another value investor, Avner Madelman, also cast doubt on the idea that understanding financial numbers requires complicated formula saying, and I quote, the essence of business, the conflict, the personalities, the drama, cannot be encapsulated in language, let alone in math. Instead, start with a qualitative analysis. Demonstrate you understand the company, the business, the management, the industry, and the competitive situation. Once you get the quality, quality of the stuff right, then you start putting in the formulas and the spreadsheets, not the other way around. Thank you very much. <laughs>